Music has always been a part of my life. Some of my earliest memories are of my family around a fire, underneath the stars, singing African choruses. My dad would pick up the guitar and start playing four chords. He'd stay there for ages. He'd build suspense and then start singing. Bali Shelly Yaya Bona Diahi Mupenda Zaya. My mum would then jump in with a high harmony. Na Shelly Yaya Ke Kuita Fakali. And my siblings and I would eagerly jump in and complete the song. Mucha na na usiku. We would go on and on, taking turns to lead and pick songs. That's where my love for music really began. Mom and dad telling stories, teaching us songs that were taught to them as children and strumming away on the guitar. I felt safe and loved. When I was 13, my love for music changed. It deepened and grew. I still remember the day. My family and I were watching The X Factor. Ed Sheeran, an emerging artist at the time, came on stage and started singing the A-Team. White leaves, pale face, breathing in snowflakes, burnt lungs, sour taste. And they say she's in the class A-Team, stuck in her daydreams. I was completely floored. I looked at my family and I said to them, I want to be like him. I want to sing songs and tell stories on my guitar. See, what got me about the A-Team wasn't how catchy the song was and how nice it sounded. It was the lyrics. They were deep and they were unlike any other pop songs out at the time. The lyrics were actually saying something. Behind those beautiful vocals and folky guitar, Ed Sheeran was telling a story about a woman who struggled to make ends meet and so turned to other means to survive the streets, to pay for rent and feed her, her habits. He wrote the song after he visited a homeless shelter and heard the stories of the lives of the people there. Ed Sheeran tapped into a meaningful narrative in the A-Team. The world embraced him and for me, a love for songwriting was born. A love for honesty, reflection, and for narratives in songwriting that talked about our world, our experiences, and our true unfiltered feelings. As I grew older and I fell deeper into songwriting, I asked myself, what does this look like? What impact can taking a vulnerable approach to music and songwriting actually have? Is it worth the risk to go against what's expected of me and what is normal? Kanye on the fourth studio album, 808 and Heartbreak, answered those questions for me. Okay, putting aside your thoughts of Kanye and his many controversies, and boy is there many, let me explain. 808 and Heartbreak revolutionized pop culture and the landscape of the rap genre forever. Why, you may ask? The echo, simply put it, the vulnerability he willingly shared in his music lyrically and exploratory in production. Unlike before, this project leaned into heartfelt heavy themes lyrically and a bass heavy production style. The critics absolutely hated it and tore the album apart, but the people, they loved it. See, Kanye vulnerably extended his lyrical scope beyond the usual. So the streets, drugs, money, cars, girls, getting lit, you get it. You get the full picture. Instead, he talked about the love he has for his mom, school, his faith, and in later projects, mental health and his family. Kanye's songs shattered the industry standard of what a rapper is supposed to talk about, look like, and sound like. In doing so, he made it possible for rappers who didn't typically fit the mold, such as Drake, Lil Uzi Vert, and Juice World, to pursue music, to pursue their passion and have a chance at the rap game. It was now okay to be a rapper with an average upbringing who's not from the hood. It was now okay to freely talk about your feelings and thoughts and stuff and still be respected and be successful. 
Critics have now changed their minds on just how good and important Kanye's 808 and Heartbreak album is. I wonder whether the hip hop and rap game would have just been as versatile, inclusive and exploratory in production if Kanye had not taken the risk to be vulnerable like that and to, to do what has not been done before. Through this album, Kanye inspires me to just do me, to lean into this vulnerability thing wholeheartedly, to dare to dream what, it may, what may be possible if I go a little further and explore beyond the standard. An artist friend of mine a while back said to me, I just want to sing a song, a sad, dark pop ballad that has nothing to do with nothing, that won't be categorized as a new spin on R&B or urban music. I just want to do me and it be enough. The reality is there is, an there is an expectation for what a black artist looks like, sounds like, and talks about. Although I'm not a rapper like Kanye, I want to shatter those expectations. I want to widen, I want to widen and deepen the landscape of what a black artist looks like, sounds like, and talks about. I'm now going to share a song, an original song called Let Me Love You. It's a conversation between two people. It's a folk pop track, Ed Sheeran style. It's just me, my words, and my guitar. When I open up about my insecurities, fears, and dreams to the guy I like, this is how I hope the conversation would go. Insecure about a lot of things Don't know if you think I'm fine I'm far from Hollywood's chosen one I'm not your typical ride or die I'm not the girl who gets the guy I'm the girl who's almost seen but never is Still you say, let me love you, let me love you let me love you, 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 you. Let me love you. Let me love you. Let me love you, 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 you. Cause I don't care if your hips around, thighs touch. Stretch marks tell a storyline. There's more for me to love. I'm more concerned about these butterflies about to burst inside. When you open up your heart and reveal you're a work of art. a lot of secrets head inside it hurts when my friends don't see I'm not around I'm far from the important one I wanna make my family proud I'm scared I'll let them down I don't wanna overshare you around still you say let me love you let me love you let me love you, 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 cause I don't care if your hips around, thighs touch, stretch marks, tell a storyline, there's more for me to love. I'm more concerned about this butterfly is about to burst inside, when you open up your heart and reveal your work of art. Cause I don't care if your hips around. Thighs touch, stretch marks, tell a storyline. There's more for me to love. I'm more concerned about this butterfly is about to burst inside. When you open up your heart and reveal your work of art. Nina Simone, where do I begin with her and her fearless vulnerability? If you're not familiar with her work, let me enlighten you. Birds flying high, you know what I mean. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting 
on by You know what I mean It's a new day, it's a new dawn It's a new life for me And I'm feeling good As you might have guessed, the song I just sang is feeling good. It's such a feel-good song, isn't it? Nina Simone's arrangement of feeling good from 1965 has become the template for nearly all the versions of feeling good that we currently know today. Yes, ladies, Michael Bublé didn't first make it famous. <laughs> Most argue that she was the first artist to truly find the essence of the song. I don't think this was a coincidence. Anthony Newley and Leslie Briscus wrote Feeling Good to express the high that comes with liberation from oppression. Having released her arrangement at the height of the 1960s civil rights protests in America, it's not too left field to say that Nina's Feeling Good emotionally captures the movement's yearning and plight for freedom. Her delivery is strong and vocally rebellious as she soars and sweeps with the strings and horns. It's almost like she's inviting the listener to dream about the good days that are to come after the fight, where they will be able to fly high as the birds in the sky, birds untouchable and free. Perhaps what also made her arrangement so impactful is because it wasn't new for Nina Simone to write and sing from a painful place to speak on topics of equality and inspire others to fully find freedom in the world and in who they are. Nina valuably, vulnerably wrote about the struggle, pain, rage, hope, sadness, suffering, and the everyday experience of black people. She encouraged African-American communities to draw on their heritage for strength and to be united as one. She inspired the youth with releases like To Be Young, Gifted and Black, where she said, in the whole wide world, you know, there are billions of girls and boys who are young, gifted and black, and that's a fact. Through her fearless pursuit to vulnerably share her truth and the experiences of her people, Nina gave people a voice and evoked some very difficult conversations in communities. They still do today. What a legacy. Nina's music means so much to me. When I discovered her catalog, I felt heard and inspired. She's taught me that there is so much power in writing music from an honest and emotional place. She's taught me to unapologetically be myself, do me, and stand up for myself as a young, gifted, and black songwriter in whatever I want to talk about to be bold and to own it. Without her boldness and fire, way back in 1965, when she rearranged Feeling Good, I don't think I would have had the courage to write my song Standards. I wrote Standards last year in June at the height of the Black Lives Matter protests. Like a lot of people of color, I reflected. I reflected on racism and how it still affects us today. And it was a time for me to truly address how racism affected me growing up. In Standards, I talk about how I believed the distorted standards of beauty that were projected to me growing up in movies and the people around me. The personality changes I made as a kid and teenager to fit in and be accepted in. And essentially in Standards, I encourage people of color to not lower their standards and invite others to pause, listen, and reflect on how racism affects others. I am now gonna share standards. Listen. You've got weeds growing in your hair, a web of tangled dandelions, a mess on your head. A picture of confusion, this is not what beauty is, straighten your hair. Yeah. 
Your skin needs the color of the crystals made on a seashore. I was ashamed, made to believe I'm unworthy, not as deserving. For a black kid like me, I had to agree. See what they see, change a lot of me to feel the narrative and be accepted. Now I sing, never lower your standards down. 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 I put aside my heritage, lend into their privilege, subdued my personality so I could make them comfortable. Make myself approachable so I could make some friends amid the standards. My face is the color of the ground I walk on. Why would they see me? My skin bleeds red like every other human. But this dark shade makes me threaten an easy target For a black woman like me, I'm standing up for my needs I'm beyond what they think of me, I'm not changing for nobody I'm not just a word in their narrative I fight for my right to be seen as equal. If not for me, I'm doing it for my kids. My name is Becca Money. Thank you so much for having me.